game of the World Series, two tall men, DeBolder and Harmison, step in, and a tall man in broadcasting, Mark Zellers, to tell you about it. Frosty, like you and everybody else here, we're expecting a dandy. The control belongs to Ames, the lone unbeaten team in the state of Iowa. Number one ranked Little Cyclones, and that is Chuck Harmison. And there you see the initial shot of this ball game taken by Clay Sice and the rebound to DeVolder. And that's that game inside that's going to be so interesting. The long pass down into the hands of Matt. That's Harmison on his first personal foul. And you can believe everybody in this auditorium is going to be counting the fouls on Harmison and DeVolder. As the big men go, so may go the state championship of 1976. Indeed, Frosty. And what kind of officiating are we going to get? How touchy are they going to be? What kind of a game are they going to call underneath? These men are going to let it go. This uh, is Dick Dodson and Bob Kleiman. I'll tell you about them a little bit uh, later on. This is, uh, in your picture, Dick Dodson, the official. They will let him run. Matt, it's one out of two free throws. He's only 42% on the season from the line, which is not particularly notable. But it's one to nothing. And Marshalltown has the lead. That's Morton. Trying a 21-footer. Harmison's follow-up. Will the basket count? There was a foul whistled against Weave. But it will not. The basket will not count. And there will be no free throw involved at this right. stage of the ball game. It's referred to as a common foul. And Craig Weave picks up his initial person. Out to Sam Fuad. Fuad moves it over to uh, Morton. Back to Fuad. The two guards, and two dandy guards, we might add. And that's Mason trying to work it around. They try to get it into Harmison. Stolen, drop for Morton. Morton. It was stolen and dropped. Morton picked it up, and Crepe Suzettes. Here comes like the finding full, two. full court pressure of uh, Ames this time on Marshalltown. Marshalltown might press them right back. This could be a full court ball game. The Bobcats in their predominantly blue uniform with the red and white piping. They trail by one. They go into DeBolder. They try to dig it away. They do dig it away. Morton dug it away. It finally gets kicked around and picked up in the backcourt. And the Bobcats retain it. You're watching Roger Mason, only 5'8". Beautiful pass into DeBolder. And DeBolder with a foul. That basket will go. But DeBolder picks up his first personal foul. So each center now has one. Bob Klingsai set him up beautifully, incidentally, uh, for that. DeBolder never knew he was behind him. Klingsai nailed down the tennis. He had to run over him. And that was a big one. You're watching Morton clear the equator, move into the west court here at Des Moines. Harmison. Giving it to Fuad, who in turn gives it to Ferguson, the veteran. An air ball. Mark, I got a capsule comment before I came upstairs from each coach. George Funk says, we won't be afraid of him. Arnie Zedeker said, it'll be interesting. Tough time getting it in. He'll have to hurry. He finally does get it into Golder. Too much time. Didn't get it in in time. The Marshalltown seniors had a little meeting of their own, just the seniors to talk about this. The Marshalltown seniors haven't beaten Ames since their sophomore year. Cling size into Morton, Morton into Harmerson. His shot attempt is not good. You see the cauldron boil over on the rebound, and the five is, belongs to Roger Mason, and that is his first personal foul. Common foul. In team fouls, we have two. So it's out of bounds in favor of Marshalltown, which trails out here or more correctly, leads out here, three to two. Into Harmison with the right hand. And you notice DeVolder didn't try and gamble too much on the defense. He's got a lot of respect for Harmison. You're not really going to stop him anyway. Why foul him? Number three score in AAA in the tournament. Harmison gets his first basket. Moving around the outside is Doug Ray. Craig Weave. A little bit too strong. Picking it off is Rob Klingsides. Here come the little Cyclones, undented in 23 games. Sam Fuad, Ferguson, Morton, about a 16-footer. And the rebound to Rick DeVolder. What an outstanding tournament he has had rebounding. DeVolder. You know, Mark, despite the fact they've both been here 16 times before, they've never played for the state championship before. They go inside of the big stick, over to Weave, and out the top of the front. And the Mason. And the rebound into the hands of Matt Burks. Down to Morton quickly to Harmison. In the lane to Ferguson. I think that basket will count. It does. And the foul is on Craig Weave. He has his second. 
and Matt Bergeson is the man going to the free throw line of the famous Brothers Bergeson. Bergeson scored 14 in the win against Bettendorf. He scored eight in the Carroll Kemper win. Looking for his third point here this evening. His dad, Burl Bergeson, played for Ottumwa in the state tournament back when it was played in Iowa City. His brother, Scott, was on the 69 and 70 state tournament teams. Craig Weave is leaving. Dan Linke, a 6'4", 180-pound junior who has scored a total of 16 points so far on the tournament series, comes in. Steve Bergeson probably was the most famous of all. He's now at Iowa State. He was All-State and on that state champion 73 team. Three-point play by Matt Bergeson. It is seven to three and a four-point spread now enjoyed by Ames. Here come the Bobcats. They've been decked twice by this Ames club and they sure like to even it up a little bit. That's DeVolder. Right on. In this great rivalry, these two schools used to be known as the CIC, the Central Iowa Conference. Now they're in the Big Eight Conference. The history on it, Ames has won 79. Marshalltown has won 52. That goes back a long ways. Ferguson to Harmison. The long shot attempt, and Johnny right on the spot with that pretty shot was Rob Klingseis. That's his first basket. He's been shooting well in the tournament. Nine to five, the second time by four, Ames. DeVolder in that traffic. Gets it off to Matt, the foul on the shot. That's a good look at Rob Klingseis, who picks up his first personal foul. And that's George Funk with this year's hairstyle for 1976. George had the famous coaching crew cut till this year. The foul before the shot. So it's common. They go out of bounds on it. They come into DeVolder, bread and butter. Out here on the left hand of Ray. Dog Ray. He had 10 in the win over Heelan. He had only one in the win over Fort Madison. That's his first bucket tonight. Nine to seven. Ames now by two. Ames with the ball. Into Armisen. A lot of traffic. Kling size back to Harmison. And up out of the toaster is Dan Linky, the six foot four junior, just came in to sweep the rebound. Most of the times, Harmison has had the better of the go on when it's DeVolder against Harmison. And DeVolder has his last chance to prove something in high school uh, tonight. Harmison, the most sought after high school athlete in this tournament, said he will start listening to college coaches at midnight tonight. That's Arnie Zedeker, and he's not listening to anything right now. Trying to give the double whammy. Concentration. To Marshall Town. Now the far side handling it. To bring it around near side and Linky. He can shoot. Dug away and lost. They'll award the ball out of bounds to Marshall Town. 33 remaining opening period when you saw that mass of people in the veterans auditorium we've counted the noses mark 14,815 tonight that is a record crowd 14,815 for the tournament 96,000 we broke the old record by 12,000 people that's a 14 percent increase and if you and Barcheski would have paid your way in there'd be a couple of more to add to that and three you know, baskets for DeVolder. Even Chuck Harmison, who's blocked 86 shots this year, can't stop the big skyhook. Harmison with the long hands, with the long arms and the big hands, handling it, giving it back out to Morton, back to Harmison. I think it's off his knee. It is. Roger Mason ticked the ball, and it came off of Harmison's knee. Chuck Harmison has a little bit of a psych about Veterans Auditorium. He believes that he does not play well here. We've seen him play super here. He was all oh. tournament last year when he had 41 rebounds in that tournament. But he believes that he doesn't play well here. That's Mason in the front court. It's tied. DeVolder can untie it. You saw it. DeVolder had the shot for some reason, decided to give it off to Matt. Matt didn't expect it. And the ball goes over to Ames. That referee right there, Dick Dodson, was second team All-State in basketball under Murray Weir at uh, East Waterloo. Also was the Iowa Prep pole ball champion. Ames with the basketball. That's Morton with the shot attempt. Morton, a 22-footer. He has four points. Arnie Zedeker calls him Mr. Clutch, the floor general. Yep, traveling. Marshall Matt. On the turnover, Ames gets the basketball. We've got a change taking place for Marshalltown. 
These two officials, incidentally, Dick Dotson and Bob Kleiman from Waterloo, worked the state AAA championship game also last year. And they always worked together. For nine years, they worked only as a team. Jim Geiger has checked in. That's Morton on the shot. Two in a row for Morton. Six points for him. He's averaging ten and a half on the season. Scored nine in the opener. And six in the one against Carol Kemper. How's Roger Mason pleading the case down there to the official when he went by? Going to lose it. Marshall Town, 13 to 9. I think we're on the one and one. Yes, we are. Really? Who adds the men? Right. Ames is out in front by four. The only underclassman that starts on this Ames ball club, rated number one all year long, Sam Fouad. Spells it F-O-U-A-D. Great passer, outstanding defensive player. He has only averaged four and a half points a game this season. He In the tournament, he's done a little bit better than that, averaging about six points a tournament game. He came a long ways to get here. Born in Egypt. His mother is a Brazilian. His dad's now a professor at Iowa State University. So it moves up to 15 to 9. That's the biggest lead of the night by either club. That's Matt handling the ball. Gives it over to Geiger. Geiger to Roger Mason. You know, so far in the tournament, George Buck has been quick to go to his bench at Marshalltown, but not tonight. That's Geiger handling and giving it to Mason. Inside to DeVolder. Fuad and some of the officials in the crowd disagree with some of the officials on the floor. Fuad's initial personal foul. And Marshall Town not having the blessing of the free throw yet at this particular time. Well, here's the instant replay on that. Watch DeVolder try and get it up there. Fuad uh, got him with the body. Someone got someone. 15 to 9. We've got a minute 26 left to play. Marshall down with the ball. Ames has the lead. That's Matt. Rebound taken by Harmison. Inside position on DeVolder. He gives it off to Morton. Marshalltown has not been behind at the end of the first quarter in this tournament. They let Fort Madison 15-7 and Sioux City heel in 18-13 at the quarter. That's Bergeson to Morton. They're going to whistle it against Marshalltown. And that is Mason picking up his second personal foul. And the toughest call of the night is probably going to be that one, blocking or charging, because both of these teams have uh, guards that like to penetrate and like to come around the perimeter. So Joel Morton, who was here a year ago, scored 29 points in the tournament a year ago, looking for his first free throw effort of the evening. His daddy was a point guard as a junior when his team Waverly won the state title in 1944. His dad's name is Joe, if you remember. Seven points. The rebound follow-up by Klingseis. And the rebound goes to Marshalltown. That's little Roger Mason advancing it into the East Court here at Des Moines. Right on, Dan Linky. Linky's first basket. He has played well in reserve. He had seven in the Fort Madison win, nine against Helan. Actually, averaging nine. George Funk doesn't say they're reserves, Mark. He likes to say he has nine starters. Linky could probably start for anybody else in the state. The turnover gives possession to Marshalltown. Now let's wait and see. We've got a change taking place. Roger Mason is moving out of the lineup. Doug Ray is coming in, right? Ray is a starter. Had gone out momentarily. He's back with us. You're watching Geiger. Into the front court. You're trying to get it to DeVolder and Harmison. Sees it coming. Helps himself with 30 seconds left. Up to Morton. Drops it inside for Harmison. The right hand. Nice touch. Four points for Harmison on a couple of buckets. And they get a big turnover right there when the ball went out of bounds. Eight so in the tournament with trailed at the quarter to Bettendorf by 12 to 10 came on to win they led Kemper of Carroll 15 8 at the quarter that's George Funk along with Roger Mason on that bench in your picture Ames gets the basketball cling size is the Morton Morton about a 22 footer the air ball follow up no good by cling size Harmison Harmison is not only big but he's a good jumper 20 to 11 by 9 a big spread four seconds left 
the buzzer by Doug Ray. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Ames 20, Marshall goes to Ames 20 to 13. Ted Potter, a six foot four junior, checking in for Ames. And Craig Weave uh, comes back in, a starter, six foot six senior. That's a change for Marshalltown, down by seven. Interestingly enough, these two ball clubs have averaged 61 points apiece in their first two games. However, Ames has only given up 47 and a half per game in the tourney, while Marshall Down has given, 50, given up 51 and a half. In the previous two games. Marshall Down got a big psychological bucket right there at the buzzer. Now they got a bigger psychological lift in getting the tip. That's Craig Weave. And they whistle the foul. Ted Potter, who just into the lineup. Ted didn't start the ball game. He also got a very late start on the season. He got a broken leg in football this year and didn't get to come out for basketball until after Christmas. W-E-U-V-E, -E, pronounced Weave Craig. Number two rebounder on this club, averaging 11 and a half points a game and looking for his first run here tonight on gets it. He's the fellow that played in the girls' state tournament a year ago. Trombone in the pep band for Marshalltown. Two for two. He's the number six scorer in AAA in this tournament. And a heck of a rebounder. 20 to 15 by five. Ames. Ames has the ball. Has led by nine. That's Fuad. Marshall down with four unanswered points. Morton wants Harmerson to try it. He does. Nice touch. Four again, baskets for Harmerson. Again, you can see on the camera very easily that they've got DeVolder backing off. The only way to stop Harmison is keeping from getting the ball. Once he's got it, there's no point in picking up the foul. Ames by seven. DeVolder tries to cut it down. It falls. Will it count? We'll watch the official. He says the basket goes. Harmison has his second personal foul. And a big chance at the three-point play here for Rick DeVolder. Young man who had 31 points and 23 rebounds in that first ball game with Fort Madison here earlier this year. He has started every ball game this year. Nine points for DeVolder. He's averaging 17. He too had a football injury. His was a shoulder separation and missed uh, the rest after the first three games. That's a traveling foul. Nope, it's a timeout being called by Ames. Now this word from your local station. Marcellus McMichael of Des Moines Roosevelt in the early 30s was all state four years, but he was not all tournament for four years. This young man made it as a freshman unanimous. Ames, its lead cut to four. Trying to work it around. That's Morton giving it to Ferguson. Right on. Ted Potter, his first basket of the night. He's averaging five and a half. Potter with that bell ringer. He must be the designated Potter. He came off the bench and has potted two in a row. Marshalltown crossing the equator. Mickey, and the rebound goes to Ames. Ted Potter, six foot four junior, gives it to Morton, to Ferguson. Ferguson, the baseliner, no place to go, and he's out. They give the ball to Marshalltown. And Marshalltown, of course, needs the basketball. That's Arnie Zedeker, the very sharp-dressing coach of the Ames Little Cyclones. Was at Storm Lake, came here from Manhattan, Kansas, to take over for George Duval. Dan Linky giving it to Geiger. Geiger reciprocates to Linky. A dangerous pass across court, but it works. Beautiful layup. Well, you pays your money and you take your chance when you gamble. That's Doug Ray, and that's his sixth point. He got ten in the win over Heelan. He only had one against Fort Madison, and he's only averaging three and a half on the season. But six points here in this one. Clutch basketball, 24-20. Mort. Up in the toaster, Ferguson. Five points for Matt Ferguson. These, of course, are both out of the Big 8 conference. Marshalltown finished third. Ames finished first. DeVolder missing it. The pass from Ray was perfect. DeVolder tried to tip it as you saw. Couldn't. It's the eighth straight year that the Big 8 has had at least two teams in the tournament. Ferguson misses. DeVolder rebounds for Marshalltown. Gives it up to Doug Ray. Mason City, incidentally, was second in that league and, of course, was rated second in the state until they were upset in the district. Inside DeVolder against Harmerson. And the rebound taken by Fuad after it's kicked around a bit. How can men that big be that quick? Ames with a ball and a six-point lead. 5-13 left to play. Second frame. 
Armisen giving it to Fuad into the land of the Giants. And they'll call it against two. The fella on the floor. And right on top of that was the referee Bob Cleveland from Waterloo. Played football, basketball, and baseball at old Waterloo St. Mary's High School. Went to Upper Iowa and Fayette. He's a sporting goods salesman now. And a real good referee, Bob Cleveland from Waterloo. Linky's first personal foul. Fuad, two for two from the line. That's his only scoring so far tonight. Fuad was seven of seven from the free throw line in the opener game against Bettendorf in which he scored nine points. So he's a free throw shooter. He's averaging 72% on the season and that ain't bad. Ames tonight if they could win in addition to winning the state championship would set a school record for the most victories in one year. Three out of three for Fuad. He was hurt last year plenty. So much so he didn't uh, play with this ball club as a sophomore. Four for four, fine free throw shooting. They build it up to eight. Ames is led by nine. Five minutes left, second quarter. Ames and Marshalltown are about equidistant from Des Moines. Ames is commuting. Marshalltown is living in a hotel here. Ames right. driving back and forth. That's Ray and Geiger playing catch. With Ray handling it right now, dropping it for Geiger. Ray Geiger looking inside, but they can't get it in. Bat it away, and you see Linky retrieve it. George Buck willing to gamble with a cross the zone pass, and you don't do that often. No, not against this club, you don't. It's a pretty nice size front line. Marshalltown's got good size, though. They're two big teams. The left hand by Ray. Harmison triggering it out to Morton. He's handy. Good stage presence right there. He did Fuad, not want to gamble. Martin. Armisen, Morton, about 19 footer. The rebound and a pushing foul on the rebound. Pushing off before he went up after the foul. Ted Potter, that is Potter's second personal foul. So we take a walk down to the east end of the court. Rob Klingsize about to check in for you, Mark. Klingsize, of course, is a starter. Back into the lineup, there's uh, Coach Zedeker. A real chess game going on uh, out there right now between two real good coaches. Kevin Highland also coming in. All right. We're seeing Highland for the first time. We mentioned him at the outset of the broadcast. Kevin in reserve has played well. He had six against Bettendorf. He was scoreless against Carroll Kemper. Six-footer, 165-pound sophomore. Two out of three from the free throw line as he misses that one. Weaves only scoring. 28-20, four minutes left. Aims by eight, they've got the ball. Two Go. teams that you can just see, they reek with respect for each other. Blink slice, inside. Taking the pass from Ferguson. Now it's a 10-point spread. And that's the biggest lead of the night. Either ball club. Timeout being called by Marshalltown. Now this word from your local state. Bobcats of Marshalltown. They were here a year ago. They didn't make it to the final. Ames was here a year ago. They did make it to the final, but they didn't win it. And of course, the two teams now with an opportunity to win it. Ames has the hammer by about 10. 3.43 remaining to be played in the second period. Marshalltown's only lead was by one point, and they enjoyed that a couple of times in the early going. Since then, it's been Ames. The Bobcats are a spurty team, though. They can get on a hot streak and uh, come after you. Taken away. Handling it is Kevin Highland. Feeds it over to Morton. Morton tries his luck. A little too strong. Devoto rebounds. Gets the ball out to Doug Ray. Down to Linky. Bango. Lanky, Linky. Really reached out for that one. Four for Linky. Two field goals. Morton comes down quickly. Giving the ball to Klingsice. About a 20-footer. They kick it around. Towering rebound. Pulled down nicely by Doug Ray. Marshalltown's been behind before. They're starting to run. They're picking up the tempo of their offense. They came from six points back in the fourth quarter to beat Grinnell in the district final. Came from six back to beat Oskaloosa in the fourth quarter in the sub-state. Linky inside to Weavy. Missed it. You saw DeVolder try to tip it in. He couldn't. Ames has it. Morton. Shot attempt over on the far side by Ted Potter. And the rebound picked up by Klingsize. He can shoot. Harmison follows up. Oh, Harmison again. Look at that cauldron boil over. And DeVolder got a big, big rebound. And they turn it over. It is picked off by Kevin Highland. Good Sam Prosperity. Roger Mason waiting to check back in for Marshalltown to run that offense. That's Ferguson. 
partially blocked if Older gets the rebound. Marshalltown controls. They're down by eight. Two ten left in the half. That's Geiger handling it. Near side corner to Linky. The rebound to Boulder. Up against Harmerson. They'll jump it. We will jump against Harmerson, and DeVolder's having a tough time putting it in the hole. Harmerson not at all happy with the call. George Buck directing the traffic, bows his head right there. Looked like the first two words were our father as he uh, dropped out. Here's a big jump for Harmison. He's directing traffic. He wants everybody right where he's going to tip the ball. He's two inches taller. Weave is 6'6". Six, six. Harmison gets it. They lose it. Goes out of bounds. They're going to give it out of bounds to Ames. Linky was pleading, but the official was positive. 150 left to play. In state tournament history, Ames has won 29 tournament games. Marshalltown has won 27. Only school has done better than that. Davenport Central with 47. Morton goes to Harmerson. Back to Morton. Back to Harmerson. Bango. That's why they wanted to go to their college. That's 10 for Harmerson. And there are color cameras. Catch a couple of people hitting hard. One of them is Roger Mason. The other is Joel Morton. And Morton picks up the personal, his first. And a good little athlete, Roger Mason, will be the man, number five, going to the line, the leader of this ball club. He's quite a second baseman, incidentally, in baseball. He missed the final regular season game this year against Cedar Falls with a muscle spasm, but came off of it okay. Roger Mason, a reserve last year, a little hard-nosed guard, gets his first point of the night. He's only averaging three and a half on the season. He's only scored one point in the previous two games. Two for two. 32 to 24. We've got some changes coming in for Ames. Fuad checking in. Also coming in again is Ted Potter. They're pulling Harmison. This will change their offense. I think Ferguson will go into the hole, probably, possibly, in place of uh, Harmison. Marshalltown goes out of any pressure. At floor level, you see Morton. Joel Morton advancing west here at Veterans Memorial Auditorium in Des Moines before a capacity crowd taking in the AAA title. Iowa City Regina helped itself to the Class A championship last night. Forest City took double A. So this is the only one to be resolved. And you see Ames in a bit of a slowdown game, a four-corner offense that they're running at Marshalltown. That's the name of Marshalltown's game, and Ames is taking it right back at him. Fuad, with a minute, five seconds remaining to be played in a tournament where it hasn't always paid to be ahead at halftime. There you saw Linky trying to sneak up. Fuad, they've got it down to 50. And he gives it to Klingsice. So they apparently will try and work it down for one unless the bunny shows up earlier. We're down to 34. Ames with the ball, Ames with the lead by eight. Ames has beaten Marshall down twice during the season, once by 20, the other time by five. We're down to 20. Moving in his cling size, he pounded. it. You see the amount of time left, 18 seconds. Marshalltown with the basketball. They get it into Roger Mason, the little guy working against Fuad. It goes out of bounds. And let's see, who are they going to give it to? The officials have not made a designation. It looked like it went off of Mason's foot from here, but I'm not sure. One official called it one way, one the other, and of course, when you've got that kind of a difference of opinion, you jump it. Fuad is the taller of the two. Here's a replay on it. You can make up your own mind. Whose foot did it go off? Your guess is good as mine. Someone in the circle too quickly, apparently, on that jump. We're going to award the ball to Ames. I guess Linky was in the jump circle before the tap. So they give it in to Morton, and that's Mason, the chaser in the backcourt against Morton. We've got nine seconds left. That's Ferguson. Too long. Devolder. He gets it out to Geiger. Two seconds. One second. Geiger at the buzzer. It will count. And that's the end of the first half. With the score, Ames 32, Marshalltown 26.
shake hands. Two of the premier centers in the state of Iowa, two of the premier high school centers in the country. The tip, Marmison gives it to Ferguson. And quickly into the east corner, off the running, Matt Ferguson. So for whatever it means, Ames jumps off with the first bucket of the second half. 34-26, an eight-point lead. And in the front court is Doug Ray giving it to Roger Mason. The Bobcats in the dark uniforms, if you're with us in black and white, in the blue uniforms, if you're with us in color. And Mike DeVolder, picked away by Harmison. You know, the tournament tension is kind of easy. This is getting to be like a home court for these two ball clubs. They've both been here so much, and this is their third game this week. They just don't appear tight. No, they don't. You're watching Sam Fuad handle it, give it to Bergeson. Bergeson moving nicely. Nice yeah. move. That was the carry up. Either give him two or foul him, and he probably didn't care which. A college move, and you know why? He works out one on one with Brother Steve all the time at home. They've got a bucket uh, right in the yard. So, for the second time tonight, we have a 10 point spread enjoyed by Ames, its biggest lead. Underneath, beautifully. Doug Weave missing, uh, Craig Weave rather, missing the shot. The pass was perfect and by Roger of, Mason. The very type of opportunity that Marshalltown cannot afford to blow because uh, those you don't get often. Armisen coming up out of the slot, gives it to Bergeson. Fuad, 16 feet. I think there's a word in the vocabulary called awesome, and that's what the offense of Ames can be. They lead now by 12. Ames looking very machine-like as they come out of here in the third quarter. Mason handling it. They come around this side. Craig Weave, they need a bucket. They can't get one. The rebound out to Mason. Craig Weave, the baseliner. This time he gets it. And so maybe that'll uh, bring some ball going through that hole for him. They're just rimming around and falling out. Ames, Marshalltown respecting Ames' quickness is not in the full court pressure that they ordinarily use. They're falling back to weight. Harmison against DeVolder. And the rebound taken by Ray. He traveled. Doug Ray, you saw him hopping on the foot. He just caught it over for a second. That's Arnie Zedeker with his assistant coach, Tom Lawler, yelling out the words of encouragement, probably calling out the offensive play he wants. There's Kling size triggering it in the Morton. They go into Harmison. Bread and butter. And the rebound goes to Marshalltown. A little bit of traffic underneath. Marshall Matt, uh, the man with the bandage over the eye, that uh, brought it down and elbowed his way free. Roger Mason. He gives it to DeBolder. Harmison batted it away. The race for the ball. Harmison over to Morton. Will he try it? Yep. About 16 feet. Mr. Clutch. He earns the title. Joe Morton. A bell ringer, and it's 40 to 28 by a dozen for the second time. Harmison is so awesome, not only on offense, but defense. The last time down, he personally made the steal. He's the guy the last time out against Kemper, had himself 14 rebounds, blocked six shots, stole the ball three times. That was Roger Morton committing the personal foul. Out of bounds in favor of Marshalltown. The Bobcats trying to scratch back into this one. They bend, but they won't break. They're holding their poise even when they're 12 back. Comes out to DeVolder. The big stick looking around. Roger Mason. Matt. And will they whistle it? A couple of fellas to the yeah. deck. They're going to whistle it on the defense. The fellow they're picking up. And that is number 42. He's holding his upper lip or upper jaw. Ted Potter, his third personal foul, according to our records. Check it. That's his second personal foul. Ames crowd wasn't exactly thrilled with that uh, decision. The foul is on Rob Klingsice, his second uh, personal foul. Marshall Matt, who went to the floor hard as the boy that was injured on Tuesday of this week in water polo in a physical education class at Ames High School. And... Uh, all state end in football, never injured in football or in basketball. Banged up in water polo. Marshalltown bench was pleading that the basket should count. All right, here's Matt. He has one out of two from the line. That's his only scoring tonight. Kid can high jump six foot five. Been accepted at the University of Notre Dame, but he hasn't made up his mind yet whether or not he's going to go. Dad went there, played golf for the Fighting Irish. Armisen rebounds, gives to Fuad. 
Ames, with just under five minutes left in the third, has the lead by 11. Has led by 12 twice. They go to Ferguson. Ferguson to Morton. Morton will try it. The rebound battle for going to have a jump ball. You saw Matt Ferguson on his hands and knees. <laughs> and he just about came up. Harmison, I think, was just trying to keep him from falling down as much as anything there. George Funk is wondering how come that wasn't a foul because he reached around. All right, Ferguson should control. Something on the floor. Coin, heads. It's yours, Mark. Fisher's going to keep it regardless. Tails, I get it. Ferguson winds up with it into the teeth of Klingseis. Wipes his mouth off, gets the ball back, decides to shoot. Didn't hit him that bad. Six points for Kling Zeiss. This is a pretty well-oiled machine right now. I doubt if Ames can play much better than they're playing right now. Ames is 13 up. That's the biggest spread of the night. 4.25 remaining to be played. They go to DeBolder over to Linky. And the rebound is swept off by Kling Zeiss. Three times in this tournament, teams have been 13 points down and come back to win. Once Waterloo Columbus was 21 down and came back to tie. Harmison's shot being battled for and picked up by Morton. Ames controls. Off to Bergeson. The rebound, Harmison. Oh, he came out of nowhere. You saw that big right mitt come right out and put her in. A dozen for Marshallstown coach wants time out. His kids can't hear him with 14,800 people in here. 350 left to play. 44-29. And there it is. A timeout. Now this word from your local station. Here's a re replay of that last uh, try. Up it goes around. Look at him. Battle for it. Harmison right back up and in. You can't beat size in this game, particularly if you've got size and jumping ability and quickness. And Harmison not only tall, but he has long arms to go with it. Well, he's working size. That's right, Mitch. Or so is DeVolder. We'll follow that battle of the centers. Harmison has 12 so far. DeVolder has nine. Marshalltown on the offense. And right now, they're sucking hind wind by about 15 points. That's the farthest they've been down. Bringing around the outside. Doug Ray handling it. Drops it inside for DeVolder with a right hand. And a big comeback bucket right there. That's 11 for DeVolder. As we said, Armisen is 12. 44-31. Still a 13-point difference. Ames has the lead and the ball. In the East Court with it, Morton. Lost, picked up, lost, and Fouad digs it away from Jimmy Geiger. Fouad to Harmison. And the foul is on the boulder. And that brings the Ames crowd to its feet. And it should. Fouad was sensational. The junior, that's the only junior on a senior ball club, made this deal, went through the traffic. Watch the replay on this one. That's a dejected DeVolder. Here you go. It's bad and loose by Marshall down. Fouad is the boy in white. Teams up with us. Now watch him come down the lane and dump the ball off. Bingo. Harmison up in the air. Two points. And a foul on DeVolder at the line. Harmison, here's Mike. DeVolder has two. That's 15 points now for Chuck Harmison, who's averaging 23 on the season. He's only been averaging 15 in the tournaments. Ames has Morton putting on the pressure. All right, that's Matt handling on the near side. Giving it to Jimmy Geiger. 2.50 left to play in the third. 47 to 31, a 16-point spread, the biggest of the night. They go inside to DeVolder over Harmison. It doesn't fall. The rebound goes to Ferguson. He clears it out to cling size. Here come Ames. Andy. Ames is playing as well as they can right now. Morton underneath to Harmison. It doesn't happen. The rebound swept down by Linky. And they're letting them run, and the crowd is enjoying it. Under two and a half. The Bobcats have the ball, but they're down 16. And if they're going to make their move this year, they've got to start it. That's Matt. Geiger. About 16 feet away. Air ball. Rebound cling size. You know and he what? gives to Fuad. Winning a state title must be nice. Iowa City Regina was going home tonight. They've decided to wait and go home tomorrow instead. Fuad, 14 and a half feet away. The tie-up will jump. And for the people in Iowa City waiting for the Regals, they've changed their plan. They were going to get off the interstate at Dubuque Street. Now they're going to get off at the Oxford Interchange. The Where sheriff said it's safer out there when they come home tomorrow. Craig Weave has come back into the lineup, and I believe Matt has gone out. How's this for a matchup uh, on jumping out there? Six foot eight is that one fella. Yeah. <laughs> Five eleven the other. Harmison no sweat to Fuad. 
Less than two in the third. 16 point spread. Ames, big third quarter. They led at halftime by six, and they've just split it open. Ames, uh, Marshall down rather, has managed five points so far in this frame. That's Morton in the corner to Harmison. A lot of traffic lost. Big scramble for the ball. Coed! Wow, there's some action out there. The Boulder. Boulder is third. And Fuad is the guy that's really coming on here again. Watch him come down Slaughter Alley. Fuad will be in white, number 24, if we get the replay on this. He's at the free throw line right now. The Boulder will be the man in the dark. Here they come. Watch the replay. Fuad in white going for the steal. It's loose out there. Fuad gets it, picks it up. Here he comes. And the Boulder bangs down. Got him to the floor. Fuad at the line, Mark. Fuad missing the first of two. As you saw, Fuad was just standing there as the ball came out of the scramble. He picked it up. An innocent bystander that ends up with a three-point play. Nine points for Fuad. And the foul is called against Morton. Hey, there's some real contact going on out there. That's Joel Morton's third personal foul. 48-31, 17 points. And don't let anybody ever tell you that big-time basketball is not a contact sport. Football is a collision sport. Basketball is a contact sport. Mason. Big rebound traveling. Out of bounds there's in favor so much, of Marshall down. There's so much contact that the teammates are even getting in on it right there. I was going to say, you saw four white uniforms around that basketball. Minute 21 left. Big quarter for Ames. They are playing super. Picket fence here. Single file for Marshalltown. Weave. And the rebound to Harmison. Here come the little Cyclones brewing up a storm here on the third. And they wait for Harmison to come down and join them. That's Fuad working against Geiger. Gives it to Morton. Picked up by Geiger. Ames' quickness on the outside is really showing. Klingseis gives it to Fuad. Ferguson. Kling size, 16 and a half feet away. I don't believe a Triple A high school team can play any better than Ames has in the third quarter. That now is a 19-point spread by Ames. Going to try and blow it open. The pass is underneath the weave, blocked by Harmison. They battle for it, will jump. Super defense by Harmison. They are just playing both ends of the court as well as uh, you can probably play it right now. Well, it's all going their way, and of course, they're just sweeping the tide. We've got a change with Kevin Highland coming in and Morton going out. That's a change for me. Mark, we've told you before, the sixth man on any winning ball club is Mo. Mo Menem, and they've got it right now. So it's Weave against Harmison. Harmison, by a couple of inches, takes the tip into the hands of Ferguson. Here's Fuad with 30 seconds left. 50 to 31, a big third for Ames. That's Highland, number 22. They go inside to Harmison. Touched by Ferguson. They'll give it to the Bobcats. 19 seconds left in the frame. And this Ames team possesses what I call killer instinct in sports. Mark, they've got you down, and they're not going to let you up. They're keeping the pressure on all over the court. Well, that pressure caused Highland a personal foul, but they'll just retain possession. Highland is the first sophomore to start for that uh, Ames ball club, or to play, rather, since uh, Terry Carroll was the man. Into DeVolder, into the front court to Roger Mason against the big guys. To Craig Weave, he finds it. Six points Carroll. for Weave. Carroll, of course, was the kid on the 71 and 73 state tournament teams. He's now at the University of Northern Iowa. That's Highland. It's dug away. DeVolder, two seconds, one second. He better shoot. He waited too long. Didn't know it. That's the end of the third quarter. With the Is there anybody here for me? A big third quarter. Fuad scoring. Harmison scoring. Kling size a couple of baskets. Ferguson a couple of baskets. They spread it out and they hit Marshalltown and outscore them 18 to 7 in the third and almost knocking them out of the box. It's 50 to 33. 17 point spread. Marshalltown's task now is definitely awesome. Can be done. Let's see what happens. Historically, Mark, Dowling High School was down 16 points to West Waterloo in a fourth quarter and came back and won in the state tournament. Well, they've got to get a hot hand. Mason with a fine pass to Weave, but it won't fall. You can't get it. Got to get it in the hole and it doesn't go. And Morton, the little guy, comes up with a pill. 
Marshalltown has one thing going for them. They're on the one and one in case we have fouls, whereas uh, Ames is not. And Ames playing its game. There's Harmison to Fouad, and the foul is going to be whistled on Fouad. He was in midair, obviously didn't have control of his body, and as he passed off, he whacked somebody. And so we take the long walk up for that uh, one and one. Arnie Zedeke right there shaking his head like uh, he didn't quite uh, believe it. That's Pat Lawler, his assistant coach, uh, on his right with the clipboard. In Marshalltown in the huddle, setting their defense for the next time down. And Roger Mason is the man. Mason has hit two for two from the line. That's his only scoring tonight. He's only had one point in the previous two games. So he's not been a prolific scorer, to say the least. Assists, his bag. 50-33, it stays. And the sands of opportunity are dwindling through the hourglass of time as far as the Bobcats are concerned. Ames with the orange, giving it to Fuad. Kling size. Morton, they go inside to Harmison. Back to Morton, to Harmison. A little bit too tough. Ferguson. Matt Ferguson, that's 11 for him. He's having a 33 he is. It's a 19-point spread for the second time by Ames. Mason in trouble, and wisely it off the foot of Morton and out of bounds. Mason said he's one of the better ball bouncers. It's Mason that we've had in the tournament. Several times he's bounced it off the opposition to gain life. In for Marshalltown is Dave Watt. He's a new face, six foot three, 170 pound senior. Watt getting his first action. And here Frank tonight. Weave was the man out. Seven minutes, these Bobcats better bucket. That was Watt handling it. Gives it to Geiger, and Geiger gives it to Mason. Under up to Boulder, that right hand, oh, pretty. They need a lot of those. The best team for DeVolder. The best defensive center, maybe in the Middle West. Jack Harmison can't stop that hook. That's Mason and Morton slapped away, but the foul will be whistled against Geiger. And that on Jimmy Geiger is his initial personal foul. And so Ames will get what they had, the ball. Joel Morton was the man that was uh, hit, but they're not yet on the free throw. Kling size will trigger it in from the northern sidelines here at a jam-packed Veterans Auditorium in Des Moines. Morton takes it. We're down to 635. Two conference rivals from contiguous counties. 17-footer Morton. Harmison cleans up. 17 for Harmison. He's winning that battle of the centers. 54-35 by 19 again. They pick away. Moving down quickly is Morton. And he waits for the gang to catch up. And we're getting down to the point where you begin to wonder if maybe we're ever going to find out how good Ames really could be. Ferguson. He's on. And they whistle a foul against Ames Klingsize. The basket, I'm sure, will count. It do. But on the one and one, Marshalltown has a chance at least to stay even up. That's 13 for Bergeson. He's had a hot hand. He had five at halftime, so he's picked up eight here in the second half. Just over six left to go. But now it's 21. Ames, biggest lead of the night. And you're taking a look at Dan Linky, the junior, 6'4". Nothing's happening. Harmison clears it, gives it to Fuad. Here come the little cyclones. Frolicking here at Mets Auditorium in this championship AAA game. In the Harmison, over to Boulder. He fouled him. DeVolder has four personal fouls. You notice the offensive aims, but they're awesome defense because they're stopping a Marshalltown team that offensively has averaged 65 and a half points a ball game this year. The fewest they scored in a ball game was 51 points against Mason City and one. And here they are struggling with 35. And Ames has given up just over 47 points a game in this tournament. So they play it tough on defense. That for Harmison is his first free throw miss. He's one out of two from the line. He has eight, 17 points on the night. The kids call him Wolf. 18. 57-35 by 22. The Ames Little Cyclones. What is it, a foul? Yep, on Morton. And Mason gets to go back to the line. Joel Morton has his fourth personal foul. I'd just like to make a wild bet. Uh, I'll give you give you a little book here, Mark, and say that Harmison will be all tournament. I don't know. Let's watch it for a few minutes and see. I hate he to, might earn it yet. I hate to rush you into a decision. Mason, three for four from the free throw line. That's his only scoring. I think some of the people are starting to file out, Mitch. 57-37. Ames. 
on the offense in the person of Morton. Almost lost. Keeps on dribbling. And the foul is on Jim Geiger, his second. Well, Mark, if they do leave, they leave feeling that they did not maybe see one of the all-time great games. But I'll guarantee you they saw one of the all-time great teams. This is a fine basketball team. There's no question about it. They came in the favorite. That was fine with Coach Zedeker and his gang unbeaten. And apparently they're going to remain unbeaten. This is a basketball team that if, you know, they went on like the colleges do and had a national tournament for high schools, this Ames team would represent Iowa very well nationally. Wasn't Zedeker the guy said that you can't win them all? That's 11 for Morton. As I said, they're frolicking now. 59 to 37 by 22 for the second time. DeVolder trying to narrow it. Cannot. Harmison with the rebound foul from behind by Watt. Arnie, of course, Iowa's most eligible basketball bachelor right now, but all of that's going to end also. Dave Watt's first personal foul, six foot three senior. Long about to June, Arnie Zedeker's going to be hearing wedding bells. It's quite a little wedding present these kids are giving him. You bet. Makes it a nice year all the way around. Chuck Harmison. And yet, of course, Marshalltown can feel very, very proud of what they've accomplished this season. Harmison's six eight. His daddy is six foot six. His mother is uh, just over six foot tall. We have Harmison for 19 now. Remember, he's averaging 23 on the season. This is the first time in the tournament, however, he's gone over 15. So he saved it for the championship game. And why not? 61 37, 24. Really zapping him. That's a pretty shot by Jeff Isrig, who's just in the lineup. Isrig is first basket, five foot ten, one fifty, a junior. Marshalltown can look ahead. They've got some uh, youngsters uh, that are going to be back for them. They also won the Big Eight Conference sophomore title this year. That's Kling size. Ten points for Kling size. Everybody's getting into the act. They're spreading it around. 63-39 by 24 again. And the last thing, of course, Marshalltown needs is a turnover. But Ames gets the basketball. And George Funk, who's brought his seventh team to the state in 13 seasons in Marshalltown, has already announced that he'll be back. George can be very proud of his accomplishments in Marshalltown. It's a tough road to hold to get here. That's Ferguson over to Harmison. 4.37 left to play. Cling size. And the rebound picked up by Watt. He gives it up in turn to Isgrig. I bet Jeff was glad to get in there and see all that contact. He's their fullback in football. No foul. No harm, apparently. I don't know if Geiger feels that way. <laughs> Morton with the basketball. 4.15 left to play. Harmison giving it to Morton. Cool, calm, collected team. Harmison will try to add to his score. Cannot. Follow-up cling size. <laughs> you don't see many openings. There's just not many weaknesses there in an Ames team that's well-drilled, well-disciplined, undefeated, state champion, and setting a new school winning record of 24 straight ball games. One team out there is having a lot of fun tonight. Here's Craig. Around the outside, Watt. Dug away by Ferguson and then Harmison. Dug out of his hands and he is fouled. That Dave Watt might be kind of handy to have around. The boy that just made the foul, uh, Mark, in case his action gets any rougher. On weekends, he works in the emergency room at the Marshalltown East Hospital and also makes ambulance calls. He might be handy. I was going to say, with that kind of contact, he might have been thinking of sending Harmison to the emergency room. <laughs> Chuck, of course, is used to it. I'm sure that George Funk thinks this is an emergency right now, but what can you do? Kevin Highland's back in the lineup as Sam Fuad comes out, and Arnie Zedeker, I think, will pull him one at a time and give the Ames crowd a chance to respond to the individual athletes. Fuad is a junior. He'll be back next year. He finishes with nine points. And Highland is sophomore on a state championship team. Harmison, 21 points. He's a guy that said he doesn't play well in this arena. I'll still give you a chance to wager with me. I think he's all tournament, Mark. Yeah, he should get a vote or two from everybody around here. Here come the Bobcats, 66-39. I know of two he got. <laughs> yep. Yours and mine. 
Jimmy Geiger into the traffic and comes up with a basket. That's his fourth point. 66-41. It's narrowed to 25. They were down by 27. Klingseis. Harmison over to Boulder. 23 points for Harmison. That's a season's average. He's having a super championship game. It's all there is to it. About and three minutes left. And the Bobcats uh, have won their 30th state tournament basketball game, their fifth state championship. Meyer on the shot. Perry Meyer, six foot six, 190 pound junior in the lineup. Kansas first one. We've got a timeout being called by Ames. Less than three left to play. We've got some lineups because of changes. Pudge Rasmussen is in the lineup. Phil Engen is in the lineup. Highland was in before. He remains in. These are changes for Ames. And that's Phil Engen bringing the ball up court. And he is fouled by Iskri. And so, Mark, I guess the poll people look pretty good. You know, there are three polls that you go by in Iowa. The AP, the UPI, and the Des Moines Register poll. Ames was number one on all of them all year long. They're undefeated. They're the state champions. They're awesome. They make the pollsters look pretty good. Indeed they do. The only person all year long that kept doubting if they were rated number one was Arnie Zedeker. And finally, about Christmas, Arnie said, I think we like being number one. And then he said, yeah, but you can't win them all. 69-43. The first team to ever go undefeated through the Big 8 Conference since they reformed it in 1969. That's not an easy thing to do. No, sir. Not with schools like East Waterloo and Mason City, Marshalltown, Cedar Falls, West Waterloo, Central Waterloo, Fort Dodge. That's Geiger handling the ball. Gives it to Isgrig. Jeff Isgrig. Inside to Perry Myers, slept out of his hands. Ames has the reserves in. That was Scott Gibson, and of course those reserves are going to battle like they're behind by 10 instead of ahead. And I'll tell you something, Mark. You know who makes Ames number one all week long in practice? Those guys out there, the reserves. They're the ones that had to play against that first five to make them that good. The slippery orange, and it winds up in the hands of Ames, but they're going to call a foul, I believe, on Linky. Let's wait and see. Linky will nope. be shooting. The foul is on Pudge Rasmussen, number 10. Linky on the line, he has four. He had 16 in the previous two games total, so he's got 20 for the tournament thus far. It's the eighth straight year the Big Eight Conference has had at least two teams in this meet. For a while, they thought they might have four this year. And, and Rasmussen were... comes up with a rebound. In different districts were Mason City and East Waterloo. That's Phil Engen. They bring it up on top. Engen handling the ball. He gives it over to Ted Potter. Nice move in there by Scott. Scott Gibson. He'll get the basket. And the foul is whistled against Scott. But the basket will come. Teams have met before, as Mark has told you. Ames won at Marshalltown by six. They won at home by 20. And at their new home here in Des Moines, they're winning big. 28 points difference. Biggest lead of the night. Linky made a couple of big, big free throws. He was the man in the final 30 seconds against Sioux City Heelan after he injured an elbow in the Bettendorf game. Check it, the Fort Madison game, he hurt the elbow. Linky gets sixth point of the evening, 71-45. We're down to two even. Kevin Highland handling it on the far side. Passes it off and turned to Phil Engen. That's Engen at the top of the key with it. Dropping it inside to Potter. Potter from 15 feet. And the rebound goes to Isgrig of the Bodcats. 1.40 left to play. Geiger. Mark, you might remember some names. The last time Ames was a state champion, 1973, the all-tournament team was Steve Bergeson, Frank Schneider, and Terry Carroll of Ames, along with Mark Enright of Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Remember Gary Eggers from Dubuque Wallard, Rich Chapman from Clear Lake, and Craig Court from Marshalltown. Greg, that was a great tournament. Some fine teams in that tournament. A lot of good college athletes in there right now. Bergeson is at Iowa State. Carroll's at UNI. Enright is at uh, UNI. Eggers is at Loris. Rich Chapman's at Augustana, South Dakota. Greg Court's now at Iowa University playing baseball. Just coming into the lineup, 
is Zier, Mike Zier. He replaces Rick DeVolder, who gets a deserved hand. DeVolder checks out with 13 points tonight. Rasmussen was the guy who fouled Geiger, and Geiger now with his second free throw after making that initial attempt. And the rebound is picked off by Potter. Here come the little cyclones. Minute 30 left, 71-46. Rasmussen handling it. Gives it to Island out here into the hands of Island. Island's first basket. 73-46. Ames and Marshalltown wants a timeout. Now this word from your local state. A second half blitzkrieg by the top-ranked little cyclones of Ames has just moved Marshalltown right out of this one. Ames led 32-26 at the halftime, outscored Marshalltown 18-7 in the third. They're pouring it on here in the final quarter. They're out in front now by 27 and have led by 28. In the lineup is Tom Farley handling the ball. Farley gives it to Zier. Zier in turn giving it to Stays Call. As Coach Funk now is giving some of his other people a chance to play. That's Zier on the shot attempt. Seven seconds left. There's the countdown on your screen. 73-48. Just a question of what the final will be. That is Minnick, number 30, handling the ball. He gives it now to Kevin Shanks, who's in the lineup. The shot attempt not good by Lurston. Here come the Bobcats. That's Tommy Farley. Top of the key, the shot. No good. Underneath Farley with the ball and a personal foul. Sam Lurston. And that is Lurston's first. 22 seconds left to play. Ames a decisive championship. What a super season the Little Cyclones have had. And they were here a year ago in this final two, remember, and didn't win it. Zier misses the front end of a pair. misses them both. We're down to 18. And now you can see the seconds ticking off. The ball is being handled by Minnick. The shot attempt is by Shanks. Kevin Shanks. The Ames fans love it. 75-48. Two seconds left. The desperate shot by Zier at the buzzer. And there's Bedlam here at Des Moines. You see it. That's the end of the ball game with the score. Game 75, Marshalltown 48. We'll be back after this word from your local station. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, to present the Class 3A championship and runner-up trophies, the medals for the players, and the coaches' achievement award to the championship coach. Here are two members of the Board of Control of the Iowa High School Athletic Association. The current chairman, Superintendent of Schools, Decora Wayne Burns, and the Vice Chairman, Superintendent of Schools at Wall Lake, Lowell Fulmer, Mr. Burns. Once more, it's our privilege to present awards to two very fine basketball teams. Now, for the runner-up and the Class AAA coach, George Funk and his Marshalltown Bobcats.
team that proved why it was number one all season long, the Little Cyclones from Ames Island. again for that very special award, the Sportsmanship Trophy Award for Class AAA. Speaking for the Iowa High School Athletic Association and the Iowa Broadcasters Association, here once again is Mr. Philip Kelly, President of Communications Properties and General Manager of WDBQ and KIWI in Dubuque, Mr. Kelly. Thank you again, Bob. Just as a refresher, the judging has been going on all through the tournament by the Iowa broadcasters. And at this time, on behalf of those broadcasters, we want to commend all the tournament teams on their sportsmanship. On behalf of the Iowa High School Athletic Association and the Iowa Broadcasters Association, it is my pleasure at this time to announce the winner of the 3A Sportsmanship Award. And we want to say it just can go to one team. And that team for 1976 is Carol Kipper. Presented to the coach of Carol Kipper. Nice, great big hand for the sportsmanship winners for 76, Carol Kemper High School. And now for the 1976 Class AAA All-Tournament Team, here's Frosty Mitchell. Thank you very much, Bob. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the finale, All-Tournament, AAA, and of course, these were the big ones, as you know, and this was, an, again, a tough selection for all of those broadcasters that have been here all week long to ballot. It's a great team. Any coach would consider it, I'm sure, a dream team. And to present the certificates again, Governor Robert D. Ray to congratulate these boys. All-Tournament. 1976 Triple A. Congratulations to Ames Joel Morton. And all tournament is a young man that learned in the semifinals how it felt in 12 seconds to go from goat to hero. Helen of Sioux City, Mike Corey. And if you saw the great Helan team play this afternoon or any time, you just couldn't miss this guy. Too tall, Al Jones from Sioux City, Helan. Our all-tournament team had a dead heat. It took an overtime because it was a tie as far as the most votes, and so we have two captains and two very deserving people. One of the co-captains on the all-tournament team, he's tall also, Rick DeVolder from Marshalltown. <laughs> and certainly, last but not the least, the co-captain from Ames High School, Chuck Harmison.
tournament team, how would you like to go against those five? 